Hi, welcome back to another Terrence Gapes video. Uh, in this video, I'd like to show you another set of the end caps that I've been making. These are um, end caps that are designed to create a, a tapered slope and then behind it stack boards so that you could have an elevated playing surface behind it. This customer has had me make several um, sets of these. He's building a, a very large plateau and in this set here um, what I've included is a road, um, a more formal road that has been previously put onto the end caps um, that can join to the other uh, flexible roads that I sell and the customer has a set of those already. So so this is designed to integrate that road system into the end caps to traverse to the top of the plateau. So let me show you this in a little bit closer detail and describe some of the work that's been done. So here you can see the end cap in a little bit closer detail. Um, this road comprises of um, one of the straights and then a pair of the 45 corners to make the 90 degree bend to reach the top of the plateau. Um, and what I've done here is um, in order to maintain this at a relatively flat angle, I had to extend this out quite a ways. So what I've done is I've um, uh, if I keep, can stop hit, bumping the light, uh, what I've done is I've created a rock face cliff that helps to elevate this section here to help the transition with the road uh, to the total height. So I've rocked this whole face here and then along this side rocked along the back side of the road so that this can go you know, lower and be able to get that vertical height here to meet the top of the plateau on this end and then the road comes down um, and meets flush with the table. Now one of the challenges with this area here is that because the road has its own thickness, the road is about um, say an eighth of an inch thick, um, if you're going to have this meet a surface and then have one of the flexible roads laid to meet this point, the flexible road is going to stick up an eighth of an inch. So to get this to join flatly, I had to bring this down to an incredibly thin taper so that this will meet relatively flush to the roads that are laid on the table surface. So this creates it's a very thin union here and on the underside I've reinforced it with a thin, uh, very thin sheet of styrene uh, plastic to help bolster that but it's going to, you know, this is a delicate area and we'll need a little bit of, of care when moving and storing this piece. And so here you can see um, that at the base of the cliff, with a little bit closer view, and then I've just flocked the, you know, and foliaged it right along the whole the area. Um, this is an awkward transition between the road and the and the rocks, and I could have backfilled it in with some talus, but I haven't been using that on these end caps very much, so I didn't want to create something that didn't really match the theme of the rest of the boards. So what I did is I just went in and heavily vegetated it, perhaps you know because of the protected nature of these uh, rocks, you know they get a little more shelter and they can grow a little more lushly and uh, that's a sort of story that I've I have put down for myself um, that it, anyway and it creates a really nice transition between these two areas and I really like the way that came out um, I did try to pick up some of that feel along this cliff face as well uh, so I tried to vegetate it relatively heavily in some spots to help tie that in and carry some vegetation along the edge of the road particularly in areas where I needed to conceal some of the transition between the rubber flexible road and the actual surface since this does create a little bit of a berm here along the edge where most of that has been feathered out and is pretty much unnoticeable but in a couple areas I had to cover that up and um, these uh, provide a you know, great opportunity opportunities for places to put in a couple, um, you know, a rock, say, or, or a couple bushes to just kind of create a more seamless, seamless transition. And the other sections that have been completed for this phase of the project are two end caps. One of them is shown here. The end cap creates a 90 degree corner so that the um, end caps of the plateau can continue, you know, off in this direction. Um, 120 inch section, which you can see here. I decided to put in a, a nice large rock face uh, on this section. And one of the things I noticed is that in order to enhance its realism, you really need the um, rock to feel sort of set into the board rather than attached to the outside of it. So I did a lot of um, sculpting to backfill in this area behind uh, the top of the rock to create a more smooth transition so that um, where I could add a little talus along um, the top like a little you know soil has been collecting there um, a little bit of grasses and some vegetation to tie that in um, but anyway that's you know one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of a project is creating a, a you know a more fluid transition between at least the top of this whereas at the bottom as material can erode away from it and carry on down you can get undercuts much more believably 
It also included another 10 inch section, and here you see the 10 inch section. Um, this is 10 inches long, uh, 6 inches high. Um, and then um, here you see um, the uh, second end cap, which comprises, you know, um, again, that 90 degree join, um, allowing the end cap to continue uh, so that you can create the full plateau behind it. So this really um, allows for, again, in case you haven't seen the other end cap videos, the stacking of boards behind this so that then you can have a top surface uh, that is six inches high from the table height and the dimensions of that plateau is dependent on the number of end caps being used and their configuration. And so as a final comment on this project, I realized that in the last phase, the last set of sections that I had sent out of the end caps, um, <coughs> excuse me, that I had made an error in um, measuring the cut um, of the, the actual slope. So this is the template that I use um, to do the uh, actual joins. So what I do is I size that up against the, um, you know, the edge of the foam stacked, and then I use a hot wire blade to cut that transition. Um, so this template can provide uniformity. This is all sculpt mold stuck on it here. Um, but I use this to create uniformity between the pieces so I can ensure a good join. Well, in the last phase of them, I decided I'm trying to check the squareness of the um, sides and the at backs of the uh, end caps so that they meet flush with each other and meet flush with the boards behind them. And so I've been using my trusty, uh, you know, speed square. Uh, this is a great tool if you don't have one in your toolbox as a uh, terrain, uh, you know, hobbyist, you might want to get one because um, it produces, you know, a nice guide for right angles. But saying that, what I failed to account for is that I stuck this up against, um, you know, here being top. If you can see, I've marked this. This is the top of the uh, end caps. This is to be, to be to the ground. And when I stuck this against it, um, I noticed, I don't know if that's going to show up in the light. Oh, I think that does. That it was about uh, two eighths of an inch short of six inches. And I was flabbergasted because I thought for sure I had measured this correctly. I kept putting it up on the table. I kept looking at it. I don't understand how I made that mistake. But clearly I needed to fix that. And so the next phase of the end caps, I was sliding this up just a hair when I was doing my cuts to make sure that I got it at a true six and I could fix the first set that I sent out, blah, blah, blah. Well, what I failed to recognize is that on a speed square, the six inches that are measured to the top here are measured from this point here, not at the table surface. So it's actually got a two eighths of an inch, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, bottom, platform that elevates this for the measurement and I didn't take that into account until I was working on this set and I took a look at it again and I realized that this is exactly right as I originally had measured it hmm so <laughs> caveat, you know, um, you know, pay attention to how your tool measures, make sure you're measuring it correctly. And I want to extend to the customer that, um, you know, if these um, previous pieces that I've sent out don't match up perfectly, I'm happy to pay to have them shipped back to me. And I can shave certain areas and do a little reworking of them and get them to match a little more fluidly. Uh, they should match perfectly once I redo them to the right size. So if there's no, you know, if there's an aberration in that when you set them all up in a line, that's most likely due to an error in my uh, use of the tools that I had available to me. Me. So I, I, I've never had formal carpentry training, um, so sometimes I make uh, mistakes that um, go unnoticed uh, for a week or two, and sometimes that means that goes noticed until after I've shipped something. So I'm always there to back up any things uh, that I do send out to any customer, and I'm always happy to make repairs or alterations, especially when it's a uh, design error on my part at no cost. So. Just wanted to mention that if you're working on any kinds of projects like this and you're using your speed square, make sure you know how to use it properly. So, saying all of that, I hope uh, that some of this has been helpful to you or maybe inspirational. Um, I really like the way the road uh, came out on the um, larger piece. Oh, I didn't mention that that section is 30 inches long rather than the standard 20 because I needed the extra 10 inches to be able to have the um, road traverse the entire slope at an angle that's not going to be too steep. So I had made one unique 30 inch piece just for that uh, road section. Uh, but I really like the way that came out. Um, and, uh, and so there's going to be, of course, uh, there's plans for additional phases for this end cap project. Uh, and one of the pieces will have a waterfall in it. I think I've mentioned that before. So that will be coming up in the future. And when I do that, you know, I'll be um, happy to put that up and give you all take a, a take a look at that. Uh, and then feel free to leave comments, questions down below in the video. I'm always happy to answer those. And I'll be back real soon with another video. Thanks for watching.